Okay, see here. This is where we're gonna replace the fuel filter or we're gonna service it. But first, we wanna put some lube on the bolts that holds the filter and its bracket in place. Second, is I wanna use this quarter inch drive ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket for releasing all the 10 millimeter bolt the one in the center first that will be for the fuel filter and the other four will be for the bracket this is actually a shield to prevent rocks from hitting the fuel filter now that is our fuel filter and that stud right there is what that center bolt was on the fuel shield. Now you can see we have a magnet on the sump side of the filter and that's for holding back any corrosive element inside the steel gas tank. If we had a plastic gas tank we wouldn't need that metal because there will be no corrosion for the filter to trap. So now we want to get this hose off the filter. This side is the outlet that goes to the fuel injector, the engine, and this side comes from the gas tank. This is where you're going to need to use a star tip or a Phillips bit screwdriver for releasing those stainless steel clamps on the hose. It will also need some lubricating oil on that screw releasing it to its maximum length for relocation of the stainless steel clamp on the hose. This is where you're going to need this needle nose pliers preferably on a 45 degree angle for grabbing the spout where the rubber hose is attached, twisting it holding the other part of the filter with your hands allowing for the hose to be removed. Applying of lubricating oil to where the hose meets the spout will be beneficial for removal. With the inlet side of the hose partially removed we will now go to the outlet side detaching that plastic from the rubber hose that goes in to the filter. Careful attention must be taken that this plastic clip does not become broken because it is highly required to prevent the rubber hose from vibrating against surface and which could cause a fuel leak. The stainless steel clamp for the inlet hose must be relocated for detachment of the hose connected to the filter. This will be the most important part for your removal because you want to have limited fuel spill. Like you see we here we have no fuel spill. That is a plug that will normally come in the packaging of your silicone tube. That plug will have to be placed in the fuel line that's the inlet line to the filter for stopping it from leaking fluid and fuel onto the floor. Failure to use that plug will cause excessive amount of fuel to be spilled. At the same time when the hose is being removed the filter must be placed like this so the spout is up now the bottom can be removed, the hose can be removed and you want to place your thumb over the spout because we need to investigate the fuel that's in this filter to see the level of contamination in the gasoline or the corrosive effect inside the steel gas tank. Okay now during the process of removing this hose from the inlet side of the filter you're going to want to place your tool like this 
and as the hose is sliding off you're gonna clamp the end squeezing it squeezing the hose preventing fluid from leaking and at that same time you will place that plug into the hose spout outlet and preventing it from leaking now after washing back washing that fluid fuel into this container that's what it looks like so that's the sump side this top here's that gasoline that's been sitting for a few hours and you can see on the bottom all the solids so this is worth investigating so you can know how inside the gas tank condition is so back washing that filter is going to be requiring you to blow into this side and that's going to blow all the elements off the external side of the filter element now you have to understand there's still the internal side on the fil filter element which will require you to blow on this side and that is something you don't want to do because if you're going to blow on this side then you're just going to blow the element or the dirt particle inside the filter element over to the other side and that's what we don't want to do you just want to blow from this side this will be the outlet side and this will be the inlet side so you could be blowing the outlet out the inlet you could use air from a compressor to do it also so that's the level of contamination in the fuel and this will require more servicing more often service of the fuel filter by backwashing it or replacing it the next solution to this problem here is to try to replace the fuel tank maybe with a plastic one or a new one replacing this filter is simply going to be reverse so you're going to want to install this side first and then you're going to replace the side of the inlet where that plug is and that will be the end of your service now another thing is it's always best to replace your filter with a new one it's never best to backwash it but in the event you cannot locate a filter backwashing it will be the best solution now that we have both of the hose connect to the fuel filter now will be the best time to turn the key to the on position waiting for the fuel pump to operate and turned off you want to do this three times and on the third time try and start the engine this will allow all the air bubble to be purged out of the return line into the fuel tank allowing the vehicle to drive now another thing that should have been discussed before this procedure is started is that you do not want to change or disconnect the fuel system immediately after the engine has been shut off it is always best to depressurize the fuel system and that information you can find in the vehicle service manual but normally once the vehicle has been sitting for over 12 hours the system will have a tendency to depressurize and this will allow replacement and disconnection of the fuel line so you never want to start the vehicle and then go ahead and change the filter you always want to start the vehicle after you replace the filter to identify that you have no leak of fuel we also must not forget to replace the plastic retainer on the hose or any wire to prevent chafer and leak from vibration the first fastener to be placed on this assembly is the nut that holds the filter to the bracket then you want to set the bracket into position for the four 10 millimeter bolts with the installation and the service of the filter complete now is when you want to pull the vehicle out of the shop, take the garden hose
and just wash this area down just in in the case of the event gasoline might have spilled and lodged itself in the chassis frame that water will be able to suppress any flame now another thing is on the vehicle while you're under here you're gonna look at this bar that attach itself to the body that will be the cab and this will be the chassis you're gonna notice that this bar is sitting on the chassis and when you're driving you're gonna feel a vibration inside of the vehicle you're gonna ask yourself where is this vibration coming from most of the time this is where it's coming from because the engine is mounted onto the chassis the vibration which is suppressed by the mount is still transferred in the chassis and will most likely transmit through this bar into the cab and that will cause the feel of the vibration this will require replacement of the body cab mount to the chassis this bar should sit in the center of its placement.